Hello everyone and welcome to Bob's Garden. Today we're going to start an ongoing series of uncommon houseplants for common households. And we're going to start with a carnivorous plant. We call them CPs. People who grow them like to call them CP. And we're going to start with this plant here called Nepenthes ventricosa. It's what the easiest, one of the easiest uh, carnivorous plants to grow in a household. And it's very unusual. It's also called a pitcher plant. And as I said, they're carnivorous. This particular species is one of the uh, only known species in the world to uh, some of the large ones actually devour an entire rat. So it's pretty interesting. These grow in the forests of Borneo and the Philippines in Southeast Asia. They're spread around those areas. And there are two types of Nepenthes. One type is called the highland species, and the other type is the lowland species. The lowland species grows in very hot and humid conditions, and uh, a little bit more challenging to grow those highland species. Whereas the highland species, since uh, Nepenthes ventricosa, uh, lives in the highlands, and they're more like elfin forests. They're mossy forests that get into the 70s and 80s during the day, and then it cools down into the 50s at night. This cannot tolerate freezing temperatures, however. And it's a very easy plant to take care of. It's fascinating. Uh, the plant starts out with this growth here. It's going to have a stem and this is a vine and it's going to grow into a pitcher. It develops from this structure right here. And it grows out like this, these pitchers. And if we look inside here, you can see all the way inside, there's some liquid in the inside the pitcher. And it develops this entire structure from this stem. It's really very interesting. This little lid on here doesn't close. It actually helps to keep the rain out. The liquid that's in here now is fairly neutral in pH. So the rain comes out and, and it will bounce off and uh, not dilute this so much. When an insect crawls in here, it's going to crawl in here because these pitchers develop a, uh, a secretion that's very uh, attraction to um, insects. And the, especially ants, will be attracted to this and they'll crawl up here and it's uh, a flat lip on one side and curled on the other. It's a ridge. So the ants crawl up here and they get inside looking for this nectar that the pitcher puts out and then they start to struggle. That causes the plant to secrete a more acid uh, juice in there and to digest it. And it tries to escape, but the inside is very slippery. It can't get out and it can't get over this lip. The other thing that sometimes happens is, all right, so the ants get in here and they, they hide underneath so they can still get the, uh, the nectar. Well, rain will often bounce that and knock them out and that into the pitcher they go. So these plants have evolved to survive in very nutrient poor areas. There's no minerals, there's no nutrients. And so they develop this carnivorous um, habit of getting their nutrients from insects. So these are very easy uh, to grow. They're good house plants. They've been grown on a windowsill. I have this on an east or west exposure. It cannot take really direct sun. I do bring these outdoors uh, in the summertime, but uh, it's very filtered shade. So they cannot take direct sun. So they're ideal uh, for the house. I have one on an east exposure. This one's in an east exposure. And it, it gets um, filtered sunlight in the morning and not much else for the rest of the day. So I do have an 18, white, uh, 18 watt LED light that's about uh, 18 inches above this. And you see it's very healthy. I developed this from one plant and I divided it into several more and I filled up this basket. Now if you do grow them in a basket, make sure 
uh, that the um, the plant does not touch uh, the it's not planted directly into the um, basket. Uh, if this has zinc in it, it will kill the plant. So I don't know if there's zinc in here or not. But this is actually, I have in here, there's a plastic pot. This is just for decoration. I took a wire basket, I put coconut fiber around the bottom here, and then I took a plastic pot and put it inside here. So the uh, roots and the soil are not touching this uh, wire at all. So we have some other types here that can be grown in a pot. I like the plastic pot because it keeps them wetter. This is another one that was divided from here. And you can see that the pictures are rather a little bit smaller right there. And from time to time we do get, like they do in the elfin forest, they actually do grow um, some ferns in here because of the type of medium that we use. So. Uh, we don't like that to take over the plant. I left this in there for you to see because that'll happen. And there's actually not too much more care other than uh, watering them, keeping them wet. You don't ever let this dry out. And the other thing is if you have this on a windowsill and you do have a saucer under here, uh, you don't bring it to, you know, you can bring it to the sink and you can put the water in there and then bring it back. But if you do have a saucer, after you finish watering, be sure that the saucer doesn't stay there. They should not take um, standing water. So the water should drain all the way through there. And the really important thing, the really important thing is that you should be using distilled water. There's no minerals in here. And because it, we're duplicating the environment in which these grow. They grow very mineral deficient, no nutrients in there, so that's why we need the distilled water. So from time to time these pitchers will dry up and so we just take our scissors and we'll, we'll cut those off at some point. And uh, we see even some pitchers that are underneath here hiding. And the way this grows in nature is that it not only sends these pictures onto the ground, but it's actually vine and they hang from trees. So they're a lot of fun. I highly recommend them. And um, other than that, we just all need to know is that uh, they don't, they do appreciate a foliar feeding. That What we mean by a foliar feeding is that you put the dilute fertilizer, very dilute fertilizer, into a uh, spray bottle and we spray the foliage. We do that once a month in the winter months and twice a month in the summer, especially if it's indoors. If it's outdoors, it'll, it will get enough insects. So this is uh, one that I like, it's called Max-C. So we use our Max-C fertilizer, it's our 16, 16, 16, that's our numbers, uh, N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and we'll use a half a teaspoon per gallon of water. And so if you're filling up a spray bottle, you're not gonna need a lot of water, and we just spray the foliage. We don't touch the soil in here. Don't fertilize it directly. It's just a foliar feed, means that's feeding the leaves. So um, at times, we need to replenish this soil. I'm not gonna repot today. I don't need to. Um, so in this soil mix, the ideal soil mix is 80% of the New Zealand long fibered sphagnum moss. And it's been difficult to find lately. Um, so you might have to uh, get one other variety that may not be as good as this. So there's uh, most of it's 80% is, is this. And then I also throw in a couple handfuls of this orchid bark mix. It's got perlite in it. It's got osmunda fiber and um, some small bark. And this is from repotme.com. Excellent orchid mix. 
and uh, I have a lot of orchids too, so it, it goes a long way. And uh, we don't have to re replant these for two to three years, even longer. And um, I also grow in a handful of the Espoma Soil Perfector. This is a fired clay. Uh, it does not break down, and we I put a handful in the very bottom for extra drainage, and I'll throw a little bit into the mix itself as well. And that's all there is to it. Easy plant to take care of. You want to get into carnivorous plants. Um, this is the book. This is a uh, the Bible of CP growers. Uh, it's by Peter D'Amato. And it's very uh, enjoyable reading. It's got information on all kinds. And we'll be doing more carnivorous plants later. We'll show you some other ones. So um, this can be, you can get one of these from a nursery. You can order it um, from Peter and out in California, California carnivores. And um, this is a great plant to add to your collection. So enjoy. And remember, be curious, not judgmental.